Oh my, couldn't even start the recording from the beginning. Nanook Metal! Tuk tuk! Hello friends, my name is Nanook Metal and I hope that you're having a good day. It's great to see you again. Today I'm going to play a bit of the Crime Spree once again. It's a little bit different to what I've done before in Crime Spree. Mainly because right now we're playing at a level 13,000 and something level inf of cr Crime Spree. Did I say infamy? Why do I want to say infamy? Uh, you'll see the exact level in a few moments when I switch to uh, the uh, menu and uh, you'll see it there in the top left corner. And I'm recording my voiceover after recording the actual footage because at the time I was a little bit worried. I just didn't want to mess up and wanted to make sure that uh, I do what I uh, have to do correctly. And at, uh, there we go, 13,089 of Crime Spree. And, but at this point, the modifiers are so brutal that you cannot even kill a single civilian. You cannot respond to a single pager. If you do any of those, the alarm will go off instantly. This is why we uh, basically, in order to complete any heist and stealth, you have to ECM rush. And at that, not every heist will be ECM rushable. Right now, for example, we had to get a third ECM. Yes, that's the thing in Crime Spree. There are gauge boosts. One of the gauge boosts allow you to get another uh, another equipment. Could be anything, doesn't have to be an ECM. If you bring the two doctor bags, for example, that will get boosted, making you have a third doctor bag. Uh, same thing with the ECMs. Same thing with uh, the uh, jack of all trades. I brought a doctor bag with me as a secondary, as a backup. And as you can see in the bottom right corner of my inventory, in my inventory, I actually have two doctor bags instead of the one. I already deployed three of my ECMs and uh, we've been doing that in the lobby order in order to uh, wait for the vault to open. Of course, once the alarm goes off, the vault cannot be opened by the means of the time lock. You have to drill through it and this is what we mainly tried to bypass. Uh, you'll see a bit more of loud sort of action uh, later on when we move on to another heist, but here for, for now all we gotta do is just uh, make sure that we drop those ECMs in the correct order and uh, once the time lock is done uh, one of the players, Eth, he's gonna go in and uh, get the deposit boxes. He's actually the guy who's got the 13,000 level crime spree. For me personally I think that's pretty crazy, I don't know if how normal that is. I. I, by myself, for example, only got to like about level 200 crime spree and uh, that was about it. So uh, from, from my perspective, at least 13,000 is just a crazy amount of uh, crime spree to get into, like to achieve. There's that one bag. I remember when I talked about the ECMs earlier, although we have the 12 ECMs between us, you still got to deploy them at the same, like at, at the correct order. Unfortunately, one of the players dropped his one a bit too early. I think that happened because they still, you know, like the reflexes kicked in. They thought, oh, everyone only has two ECMs, right? So once the person before me dropped their second ECM, it's my time to go. But of course, the uh, that person had a third ECM to drop. So what ended up happening is that two people dropped one ECM at the same time, we wasted that uh, extra 30 seconds that we could have had. That would have allowed us to complete the heist in stealth and uh, get out of here. Not a huge loss, to be honest, because we managed to get that one bag of loot in. And in the GoBank heist, if you're going purely for the completion, make sure that you get that one bag into the van before anything. Uh, before the alarm goes off, before you do anything stupid, <laughs> like walk through the lasers. Why? Because uh, if you secured at least one bag, then you don't have to wait for the plane to come. You can escape. You can bring more bags with you if you want to. Mind that uh, on higher difficulties you might not have that much time because once at least one player steps into the sewers, the uh, countdown, similar to a car shop countdown, starts and if you don't escape by then, you're screwed. Of course, if you want to go for more bags, then make sure you don't secure the bags with the van because then you will have to wait for the van to arrive and you'll be able to escape. I'm gonna freeze frame here for a moment. Have a look at how much, how many levels I managed to get in uh, the crime spree. Uh, 400 and 
68 levels and that was from level zero i've just started mine before i started the recording so i jumped all the way from zero to 468 this mechanic is a sort of a catch-up crime spree mechanic where if you're playing in a in someone's crime spree lobby that is higher than you uh, you get that little boost every time I, I don't know whether it's actually a good thing or not, because I certainly don't feel like I deserve to get those extra 400 and whatever levels. Um, on the other hand, I am, like, we were playing at uh, at the same level as the host, like, the heist, uh, the uh, game was pretty difficult, so that's a reward system, I guess, so I'm not gonna argue with it too much, I certainly <laughs> enjoyed getting the payout. Uh, in the end, uh, you'll have a look. I actually ended up claiming my crime spree at uh, the end. I'll input that footage, footage later on, and I just I don't really care about like how how high I get. I just wanted to see uh, the rough payout of this whole system. Uh, right now we're in big oil day two. Of course, on crime spree you don't get to do the whole heist. They, you know, one day after one, you only get the snippet. Basically, you only get the one day at a time. The day one of Big Oil, in fact, was removed from the rotation because uh, I'd imagine it's just because it was very cheap, very easy to do. If you have one ECM and your left click works, like as long as you can shoot, you can complete big oil day one without any problem you just run in the drop that ecm go around the house shoot everyone up because you don't care about the intel you don't care about whether they burn things or not you just go and uh, wreak havoc don't get down and that's about it you've done the big oil day one and maybe that's why it got removed from the crime spree rotation maybe there are other reasons i certainly am looking forward to more uh, of the other heists to be included in the crime spree golden green you know alesso on the other hand that poses uh, creates another issue how do you go around the players who don't have those particular dlcs uh, it's a fair problem uh, they ideally they shouldn't get to play those heists if they haven't had the dlc of course you can always join the host so there there are ways of going around it i reckon if you connect it to someone's crime spree, for example, you should still be able to play those heists, enjoy those heists. Um, difficult question. Then the crime spree will be broken into two different restrict restricted modes. One of them like doesn't give you access to all the missions because you don't have the DLC. So, yeah, it's a difficult thing to decide on. I gi uh, give all the best to uh, Overkill. Hopefully they will solve that. The guard that you saw a bit earlier, he's an extra guard that arrives once you kill four law enforcers in any of the elephant heists, excluding day one of the big oil and day two of the framing frame, because there are no guards there effectively. But on all the other ones, an extra guard will arrive. There's actually another funny, interesting mechanic that uh, comes out from that, from killing that extra guard arriving. You'll see that in a few minutes, towards the end of the heist. For now, we are waiting for the computer to hack, finish the, the hack so that we can enter into the basement. Once there, the engine will be obtained. Uh, the engine, of course, will be... It's like 1 out of 12 or something like that. So we had to look for the intel around the property. So we could work out where the right engine is and uh, had two players assigned to the uh, pool area and the airstrip just in case the uh, flare and the helicopter spawn would be at the pool it ended up not being the case it ended up being at the airstrip anyway which is all right doesn't really matter from uh, what i remember is that you might get a chance that the helicopter arriving to pick up the engine might arrive at the pool but it should always arrive at the airstrip to pick up the players. I think so. Pretty sure. Not 100% sure. So there we are, waiting for the uh, helicopter to arrive. We've got a couple more ECMs left on us, so uh, the heist will not go loud yet. It will go loud eventually once the helicopter gets close enough. That's a game mechanic. It will go through ECMs, it will go through anything. The alarm will go off regardless. 
And here's the thing that I wanted to talk about earlier, is that when you kill that extra guard arriving, yet another guard will come. Pretty crazy, because what's the point of that extra guard coming? If uh, the uh, if he only comes, that second extra guard only comes if you kill the first extra guard, it's redundant. If you kill the f first extra guard, you already reached or breached the limit of your pagers. Because in order to summon him, you have to kill four guards and respond to their pagers. So then you are out of pagers. Another guard comes, you kill him. Alarm goes off. Anyway, what's the point of that fifth guard? Or maybe it's just some kind of uh, a loop type of thing where... Should I have killed that, as I did, that uh, the second extra guard? Maybe in a few minutes another guard would have come if the alarm didn't go off straight away. Maybe that's possible. I, to be honest, discovered for the first time. Here's all the guards lighting up like a Christmas tree. You'll see that uh, them all blink in a few moments. But, uh, yeah, unless you have so many ECMs between you, such you do as you do in the crime spree... <sighs> I don't even know. Even then, th this mechanic is pretty silly. Because all you do is just kill those extra g guards coming and nothing else happens. It's not a mechanic that will actually end up punishing you. Anyway, here's the helicopter that arrived, dropping off the engine, and now the uh, loud, a little bit of the loud action, is about to start. Quite quite different to whatever I have ever experienced before. It's very different from, uh, say, Overkill or Death Wish. It's not the same as One Down. The One Down tends to be punishing in terms of your... Uh, don't even know. Like, y you, you get downed once, you get downed twice, you, you gotta go heal. It's not the same thing here. Uh, you still get downed, but you still have your four downs like you do on uh, Overkill or on Death Wish and below. But the biggest problem is that the bu enemies just become freaking bullet sponges. They just... Yeah, like, like look, look right now. I'm gonna get tased in a few moments. I'm not sure when that will happen. I think it should happen right about now. There's a taser that will come in through the doors there. And it will show my point better than any words can describe. But uh, they are freaking bullet sponges. I have the Th Thanato sniper rifle with me right now. And it doesn't have the uh, silent skills, but it's still one of the most powerful weapons in the game. In terms of, uh, like, each bullet deals heaps of damage. Okay, I'm getting tased right now, so there is that sniper, uh, sniper taser over there. And I shot him in the head twice. That's the second time I'm shooting. Yeah, there we go, first and second. Shot him in the head twice, the guy's still alive. It's a pain, so that was the big difference that you don't get in the one down, you still can fight back. Here's another difference that happens with the cloakers, it's a modifier that allows cloakers not to down you when they kick you, but they cuff you instead. Why is it a problem? That's because you cannot just inspire your teammate anymore through a wall, you actually have to be physically close to them. You are exposed to the cloaker because he can cloak you as well, or he can down you, he can kick you and cuff you. So uh, you either have to taste them or poison them or kill them again. That's two shots to the head at least. So uh, yeah, the, the, the gameplay is fun, but it's pretty damn scary, pretty damn dangerous. Uh, I personally think it's actually at this point it's a little bit more difficult uh, than the one down. And on one down, as I said, at least you can fight back. At least if you use the Thanatos and you shoot someone in the head, you, a normal sword, for example, they will still die. You shoot a medic in the head, they will die. You shoot a taser in the head, they will die. The dozer, he will take a few moments. There, I've electrocuted the taser, the taser, the cloaker, just so that they can stick in that stuck, get stuck in that animation, so they don't kick anyone, cuff anyone, so that we. Uh, Oh, so I have a chance to kill him and escape. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, I don't even... I didn't even bother about shooting anyone at this point. I just wanted to escape. Because they're not gonna die. And the grenade launcher is even worse than the Thanatos sniper rifle. Normally with the grenade launcher, you... You know, Swan Song activates. You go there. You go nuts. Just bang, 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 bang. Keep shooting that thing until everyone gets down. Nope, no one gets down. No one dies. Only your teammates suffer from the... Uh, Explosion, explosions. 
that's pretty much the uh, crime spree in a nutshell in this level. And yet again, I got another 456 levels of crime spree just for one mission. And I'm almost at uh, level 1000. To be honest, it's just crazy. I don't know. It's such an easy way to infamy, by the way. If you guys are still, any of you are still at uh, having problems with infamy, it's the, uh, well, if you're still leveling up, play some crime spree before becoming infamous so that then once you're infamy, you can claim it back and uh, get a huge amount of levels. Well, what uh, we're doing uh, right now, it's the last heist of this video, I believe. The election day, day two. Because the map is on overkill difficulty, not the one down or not the mayhem and above, we don't have to look for the crowbars in order to open up the uh, voting, the, the boxes. So uh, basically just gotta find uh, any box, open it up, go for it, uh, you know, see if there's a machine inside. We also brought two saws this time. Saws are pretty useful in general. Uh, in ECM rushes they're quite cool as well. So that we can go into the cages. Unfortunately on my side there was only like one box and I think it was empty anyway, I ended up just finding like two voting machines and that was enough, we only needed the six, so each player only like had to find one or two voting machines and, and then we were good to go. Again, didn't go for any like money or the gold that Elephant gives you if you complete this heist and stuff, because there's no point. The uh, ability to have three CMs certainly is a fun addition, but in, at least in election day day two with the sheer amount of players it's probably not that useful because uh, we ended up finishing the heist <laughs> before then i kind of got afraid here because when the ecm is really far away from you it doesn't get rendered anymore the outline doesn't get rendered so i for a second thought oh my god like when i walked out of the range it disappeared i thought oh it ran out and the alarm is gonna go but uh, it turns out i just couldn't get it rendered Here's another crime spree level, another 430 levels. Although it gets less and less and less every time, I'm at level 1357. I think we ended up doing the go bank uh, once again, so I'm not gonna show you that again, it's just pretty much the same thing. What I will show you instead is, as promised, I'll claim the 1700 uh, levels worth of crime spree and uh, show you what you get out of it. I was pretty interested in seeing 198 million worth of experience. Don't you only need like 23 mil to get to level 100? So would, would, would that have gotten me to level 100 already or what? Also like, uh, I didn't even see how much money I got there, but uh, let's rewind. Well, I actually got more offshore money than I had in my account. The number below the 3 billion is uh, more than 492 million that I had. Uh, the reason being is that I've burnt my offshore money, so uh, that's pretty crazy. It's a huge amount of money. I, I'm pretty sure that if I were level 1 at that time and I claimed my infamy, I would have been like a level... I mean, yeah, claim my infamy if I had one and claimed the cr crime spree, I would have gotten to like level 100 straight away. That's pretty exciting because the rumor is that level 3 infamy is gonna come out at some point, so looking forward to that one. It's gonna be pretty easy to boost yourself like that. If you've got a friend with a crime spree that is that high, you just ask them to uh, play like play heist with them, go claim your infamy, go claim your crime spree, boom, you're level 100. Repeat, rinse and repeat and just do that forever. Here are the, some of the rewards that I've got, I kind of got bored of them. A bunch of cards and anyway that's about it for this video i hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think about the crime spree and what's your highest level in the crime spree i'm pretty excited to find out other than that i hope you have a good day and i'll see you in the future videos i'll see you later bye bye